by Jamila Woods. Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, we end today's show with news that a federal judge has denied a request from former Black Panther and journalist Mami Abu-Jamal for a life-saving medication that could cure his hepatitis C. Mamiya has been in prison in Pennsylvania since he was convicted of killing a police officer in 1981. He always maintained his innocence, and Amnesty International said he didn't receive a fair trial. His death sentence was overturned in 2011 on constitutional grounds, and he is now serving life without parole. Last year, Mamiya sued to receive an antiviral treatment for hepatitis C after he was placed in critical condition. An official said he was not sick enough to be eligible. The medication has about a 95 percent cure rate, but it cost the state about $55,000 for a 12-week course of the drug. On Wednesday, U.S. District Court Judge Robert Mariani denied a motion for preliminary injunction that would have let him order the treatment without going to trial. The denial was based on a technicality that the lawsuit should have named the state's hepatitis C committee for prisoner treatment instead of targeting the warden and the prison system's medical chief. Even as the judge denied Mumia Abu Jamal's motion, he also found that Pennsylvania's hepatitis C protocol for prisoners fails to meet constitutional standards and could prolong suffering. Pennsylvania treats just about five of more than 6,000 prisoners who are infected with hepatitis C. This mirrors untreated epidemics in prisons around the country. Well, PrisonRadio.org spoke to Mumia Abu-Jamal after the judge's ruling. This is what Mumia said. It's a good beginning that a federal judge recognizes that what the Commonwealth is doing and has been doing for years is not only unjust, but not right unconstitutional, a violation of fundamental fairness and the human right to life. So it's a beginning, and it's a good beginning, and we want a good ending. For more, we're joined by Bob Boyle, one of Mumia Abu-Jamal's attorneys in the case, and by Democracy Now! correspondent Renee Feltz, who also writes for The Guardian, where she covered these developments. Bob, explain, because the judge clearly was angered by what's happening to the prisoners, but ruled on this technicality. Yeah, the, the judge ruled that the Pennsylvania protocol for treating hepatitis C is unconstitutional. Essentially, under their policy, an inmate, a, a, a human being, has to be on the verge of death. Your blood vessels have to be in danger of bursting inside your chest before you're given this life-saving medication. And the judge found that this is blatantly unconstitutional. He only ruled against us on the ground that we did not name this so-called hepatitis C committee, this secret group of people who meet, in, who meet in secret and decide whether someone gets this drug. We did sue the warden, the head of the Pennsylvania Health Department, um, and we did not even know of the existence of this committee at the time we filed the lawsuit. So it's a technicality that we are going to challenge and fight until Mumia gets these this life-saving medication. But 5,000 prisoners in Pennsylvania uh, have hepatitis C, but only five are receiving treatment? It's, 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 it's probably closer to 6,000. And I think their latest estimate, they've, they've upped it all the way to 30 out of 6,000 who are receiving this treatment. And, and it's because this drug costs not just $55,000, $84,000, $1,000 pill. So the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections is acting in an unconstitutional manner in this regard, but also it is unconscionable that drug companies, and it's only because we have the horrible health system that we have, can charge this amount of money which will save uh, the denial of which will could cause death. But hepatitis C, if um, left untreated, leads to cirrhosis of the liver, which costs even more to treat. And it's also uh, absolutely and causes death and irreversible damage. And also remember, hepatitis C is a communicable disease. So people come out of prison by either sharing needles or sexual contact, can pass the virus to other people. Who, who then have hepatitis C and have to be treated. So it, it is an extremely short-sighted, and that's really a euphemism. It's, it's really criminal what's going on. Renee Feltz, uh, talk, put this in a national context. Well, it's not just Pennsylvania that we're talking about. Almost every state across the country has thousands of 
inmates in their prisons who have hepatitis C, many of them don't actually know that they have it because the prisons don't provide testing. Uh, there have been class action lawsuits, not only in Pennsylvania, in addition to what Mumia uh, and his attorneys have filed, but there's also class action lawsuits in uh, Tennessee, where there's another limited number of prisoners who are able to get the treatment, also in Massachusetts and also in Minnesota. Uh, now, New York here has done a little bit better. They've increased their funding in the recent years by about 350 percent to provide these life-saving hepatitis C drugs to prisoners, including, interestingly, to Robert Seth Hayes, who is a former Black Panther and considered a political prisoner. He was able to be cured of hep C when he got this treatment here in New York, but he has still many, many other problems with his health. He's elderly. and. Uh, he's still pushing to be granted parole. He's been denied 10 times. Well, Renee, what about this issue of the drug companies? Because, obviously, for prisons, at, at this cost, uh, the uh, and with so many uh, inmates suffering from hepatitis C, this is a, uh, this is a budget buster for uh, a lot of prison systems. That's right. Now, the company Gilead, so, uh, Gilead makes this drug, and it was investigated by the Senate in 2014. And what they found, by looking at the company's own documents, is that the cost was not determined by development or the cost of acquiring the drug. It was simply to make money. And they weren't concerned about the access that it would, the challenges it would present to access. And I would, I would add in Egypt, for example, which isn't subject to U.S. patent laws, it cost about $100 a pill, $10 in India. So it's only in this country where it costs so much. Well, we're going to leave it there, but, of course, we'll continue to follow the story. Bob Boyle, attorney for Mumia Abu-Jamal, and Renee Feltz, Democracy Now! correspondent. And a correction to an earlier headline, the hacker sentenced to 52 months in prison after being extradited from Romania goes by the name Guccifer online, not Guccifer 2.0. Guccifer says he hacked Hillary Clinton's private server at her home in Chappaqua, New York. He pleaded guilty in May to charges, including unauthorized access to a protected computer and aggravated identity theft. And that does it for our show.